All right, let's take a look at number eight. It says if a continuous, ooh, there's a buzzword, a uniform distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, the minimum is negative root three, the max is positive root three. Let's find this probability. Okay, that's a lot of information. But things to keep in mind, I have a uniform distribution. All right, and it said that this variable was uniformly distributed. The low was negative root three and the high was positive root three. Now, some folks might not like radicals, which is fine. If you don't, then just head over to your calculator and convert all of this to a decimal. So if I do the square root of three, that's 1.732. So if it helps, and again, you've got to decide what works best for your brain, you could also say x is uniformly distributed from negative 1.732 to positive 1.732. And where they're getting, I'll just do the quick mean calculation. If you think about your mean in a uniform, it would have been a plus b over 2. So that would have been negative 1.732 plus positive 1.732 over 2, which is 0 over 2, which is 0. That's where they're getting it. It's just centered at zero, and then the standard deviation is one. And you also could have done this, if you wanted to, using radicals, because I could have put here this was negative square root three plus the square root of three. Still get zero either way. All right, all that's fine and good, but they really they just wanted us to calculate a probability. So let's let's do that. Now I personally like to make the graphs. I always like to make sure that my graph matches my algebra work. So let's do this. We've got x here, probability here. Now I'll go to negative 1.73, and I'll go positive 1.73 here. Let me make my rectangle. All right, so now if we know that this distance is 2 root 3, and, and let's say you're like, I don't know that. Okay, let me, let me rework this. Let me change pen colors. Another way I could have written this was negative root 3, and this is positive root 3. So if I want the base... It's always high minus low, so it would be the square root of 3 minus the negative square root of 3, right? which would be the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3, which is 2 root 3. That is one way to do it. All right, and let me just crunch 2 root 3 on my calculator. So let me clear this out. If I do 2 times the square root of 3, that would be 3.46. All right, so this would be another way of saying this is 3.46. So if I wanted to, this would be 1 over 3.46, and I'll, I'll get that number in just a moment but just showing you how you could get the height. So let's do the reciprocal of that number. All right, so we'll do one divided by that answer, and I'm getting about 0.289. All right, so let me just write this here as 0.289. And then I wanna show you, let's say you don't like me working with these radicals. Let's do it with the decimals, okay? So let me rework this, and I wanna show you that you get the exact same number, okay? So let's say I did that this was 1.73, right? Now I'm going to do the decimal version, minus negative 1.73. All right, so let's do 1.73. Let me clear this out. 1.73 minus a negative 1.73, and I get about 3.46, right? Which should sound familiar. I mean, math is math. It's going to work out. And then when this becomes 1 over 3.46, we knew that was 0.289. So either way, we get this 0.289, or again, personally, I would have written this as 1 over 2 root 3, but you decide what works for you. If you like the decimals, work with the decimals. If you like the radicals, work with the radicals. All right, and let me color code this again. We want to go from negative 1.5, which is maybe like here, to 0.5, which is here, right? So we want to go 0.5 negative 1.5, that is our numbers that we are given. So I would like to shade that area. Now just looking at how I drew that, that's a pretty good chunk of the graph, right? I think that's over half if I'm looking at it, right? So if I think about over half, personally, just seeing that this is at least, I would say this looks closer to like 60%. I know it's not going to be D, and I know it's not going to be A. Actually, if I just by guessing, I think this is probably too high. My guess just off of eyeball, I, I think it's going to be that one. I think this is too high. I don't think I shaded 86% of the curve, but let's find out. If I want the probability that X is between 0.5, excuse me, negative 1.5 and 0.5, it's base times height. All right, well, my base is always subtraction, okay? So I want to get the base of my rectangle, so I want to go from low and high, I'm going to subtract those, so that will be 0.5 minus negative 1.5. And then the height, we said, was, you can write it as a decimal, 
oops, if I'm going to write it as a decimal, I need to put 0.289. And if you want to write it as a radical, which you could, which was what I was starting to do, you could do 1 over 2 root 3. I think most folks are probably more comfortable with the decimal, so I'll just leave this as 0.289. All right, so 0.5 minus negative 1.5 is actually 2 because this is 0.5 plus 1.5. All right, times 0.289. And if you're wondering about that, if you think about your half a unit up the x-axis to negative one and a half units below that or to the left of that x-axis, this is two units. All right, if you want to go from negative one and a half to positive one half, that's two units. So this is two times 0.289. And when I crunch that number on my calculator, I do get 0.577, which is what just graphing that problem. I got to that anyways. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.